What will it take to bring revival to America? And how do we train the next generation of leaders to take the gospel to the enemy's turf? You're listening to your radio activist on the Mark Harrington Show. The Mark Harrington Show is brought to you by Created Equal, and you can support our work by going to createdequal.org. And if you've been listening to our program, you understand our mission is to raise up the next generation of leaders to take on the culture of death, that is abortion, and win, because winning is how the killing stops. And so we're going to be continuing in those uh, in that way today, talking about raising up that next generation, going to the enemy's turf with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you can pick up my program on my Facebook page. We're also on YouTube, all the popular uh, podcast platforms, and we're over the air on 180 stations on American Family Radio, uh, Saturdays at 5.30 Central Time on American Family Radio. So my guest today is my good friend Tom Short. Uh, Tom, thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. So glad to be here. It really is good to see. Tom and I have known each other for a long time. We're actually, we live in the same city, hence you're in the studio with us yeah. today, which yeah. is really nice to have you with us. Uh, I've been following Tom for many years. In fact, we run into each other every once in a while when we're out going and doing our pro-life activism on college campuses. Tom's also there generally sometimes. Uh, doing his evangelism work. I think the first time I ran into you was the University of Florida. It may have been, and that, and you guys had quite a stir down there, and <laughs> and uh, and I got to enjoy the tailwinds of it. I, I think we had the jumbotron that time. Yes, oh, that was an interesting. Day. Yes, it was. Yep. So, Tom, I wanted to bring you on. By the way, my wife loves your morning prayer, and and I get when I'm home at the time, I yeah. I, I join in with that. So, folks, we're, we're I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you people to to follow Tom on social media at 8 30 every every day right at every morning 8 30 eastern time i do a live daily word and prayer and we're looking through just parts of the scripture and then we pray over the scripture we pray oh. over what we studied what we read and we 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 cover the gamut we this started with 40 days of prayer for america leading up to the election but we now we've been finishing the commands of christ and we, we just have a lot of well, enjoyment. we enjoy having you beamed into our uh, family room. <laughs> my my wife's a very regular follower of your uh, of your media, so you do a great job. And we, I'm exhorting you already, folks. Go to Tom Short's website, TomThePreacher.com, and you can find out more. We're going to be talking a little bit about that today. Okay. So, hey, listen, I wanted to just have Tom on because he's an expert. He's been a veteran of the uh, itinerant mis ministry of traveling around the country. Sharing the gospel as an evangelist. I've been doing it for like 30 years or so. And so let me just let's go way back in time, Tom. Uh, how did this start? How did how did this all begin with you? So actually 40 years ago. 40 years. And and I really began to give myself to this in 1980. We had moved from Columbus out to the University of Maryland to plant a church. And we uh -huh. found that the campus was so hard and people just were not interested. Uh-huh. And we thought, what what do we need to do to break through? And we committed ourselves to increasing our prayer and to daily preaching the word out on the campus. Mm -hmm. And that How fall, old were you then, Tom? Well, I, I would have been 23 years old. You're a young man. Now. Yeah, 23 years old at the time. <laughs> Still a young man. Uh, yes. You're looking good, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> You're holding up. And and but things broke loose. We really saw some revival on the campus that mm -hmm. year. It was pretty awesome. The number of people who came to Christ who got baptized, who, it, it was a pretty revolutionary time. Well, I mean, 40 years of it, boy, you're holding up pretty well. So what we want to do is jump into what it's like, you know, to, to do this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I get a little taste of it. It's, it's a little different. We're doing the pro-life issue. We share the gospel when it kind of comes up in conversation. Yours is very different. Mm -hmm. Your sole purpose is to share the gospel mm -hmm. on the campus. Um, you know, a lot of Christians, as, as you know, don't have any idea of what that's like. Mm. I've always said there should be a Tom Short in every church in America. Churches should be commissioning Tom Shorts all over the country. Wow. They aren't, unfortunately. Uh, we're not teaching our people to go out and do open air preaching mm. and evangelism. 
Why is that? You know, I think, you know, our culture tells us that uh, we should only invite people in who want to come. They can right. come into our church. And one of my slogans has been, take it to their turf. The Great Commission right. doesn't say That's invite right. them in. It says, take it to the people. Right. Jesus said he wanted his house full. So he said, go out on the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Mm -hmm. And that's that's something that we're lacking in uh, in our evangelism today. That's for sure. And that's why we support you financially oh. as a family yeah. and, and always will. So what is it like? I mean, you've got uh, a lot of hostility. What's it been like just you've been seeing for 40 years now you've been on college campuses yeah. what was it like you know 40 years ago compared to now well you know 40 the differences what, yeah what, 40 years ago of course my slogan has been taken to their turf and where that came from was way back in those early days of maryland this professor came out and he was so angry at me and he just screamed not on my turf i beg your pardon <laughs> yeah. not on my turf yeah, I, 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 said, I, said, what do you, yeah, I said what do you mean by that <laughs> and here's what he said you can say what you want in your church but this is my turf and you don't bring oh, that here. Wow. And that became my life slogan. We, we take it to their turf. Now that was some hostility back then, but ch the campus has changed a lot. I mm -hmm. think uh, um, number one, I think students are just less open. They're more secularized. Mm -hmm. They're more, they're, they're, they're distracted and filled up with other things. Jesus talked about uh, pe people's heart is hard when they're filled up with other things. And they're so filled up with their social media, so filled up with their everything they get on their their devices. Right. And they walk around now with things in their ears, and they're hearing their music, and and it's just they're living in another world of uh, where they're so distracted. Mm -hmm. Christian groups are a lot smaller than they used to be. Mm -hmm. I remember the days that the good Christian, you know, there'd be Christian groups of hundreds of people on campus. It's not that's a rarity nowadays to have right. that. Um. The the what about hostility? I mean, do you do you get the same level of that, or we've seen it tick up recently. I think it really just the five years since Trump. I yeah, mean, yeah. We are like some so for whatever reason, people attribute us as being Trump supporters. Yeah, you know, we're like the proxy for him or something. Yeah, so they take out their wrath on us. Yeah, uh, at least it was you know before COVID. Yeah, I found that in the early two thousands there was what was called the new atheist movement, and for me that was kind of like the peak and it mm -hmm. subsided a little bit. The yeah. other big issue is the LGBT issues. Right. And leading into the gay marriage decision, that was always a hostile issue that that you know, no matter what you talked about, that's what they wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand on this issue? Right. Some of that has subsided, the new atheism and to be honest, I think the LGBT people think they've won. Well, I mean, in many ways they have, yeah. actually. I mean, as far as gay marriage now and now the you know, all the supposed rights are coming their way. Uh, it certainly is not what it was before. We yeah. used to debate it uh, openly. Now it seems like they've kind of got what they wanted out of it, right? That's right. That's right. And so as a result, I feel like they, they feel less threatened by us. Mm -hmm. They feel like they've won and we, and they are in charge and we're not. And dare I say on the campus, I often find the LGBT people are more bold, outspoken, mm -hmm. confident in what they believe than the believers are. And that's yeah. a dangerous thing and a scary thing when that's the case. It really is. Yeah, yeah. you can think about that. Yeah. My guest today, again, is Tom Short. Go to TomThePreacher.com. TomThePreacher.com. Tom has written several books. One of them I have here in my library, and he brought another one with him today. That's this one here, Taking It to Their Turf. These are stories, right? Yeah. Of you and your 40 years of being on campus. It's got some cool pictures, stories of people he's met. Uh, and, and people that have come to Christ and other kinds of things like that. You can pick this up, folks, and I suggest you do uh, by going to TomThePreacher.com. Yeah, yeah. uh, you know, years ago, Tom, I think you came out when we had our big genocide awareness project. If people, you don't know what that is, that's a huge uh, pro-life display that shows abortion uh, pictures and juxtaposes it next to pictures of the Holocaust. These big six by 13 photo murals, which when we put those out there, of course, the entire campus yeah. was like, uh, how could you avoid them? It just drew attention. But you did something similar. And, and Mr. Producer, if you would, I want you to pull up the uh, truthondisplay.com. Uh, this is interesting because most, you know, uh, preachers on campus, it's just the Bible, just it's the Bible and it's them. Mm. Why did you feel it was necessary to have some kind of visual 
uh, evidence, if you will, for, I, for the for the truth came, claims you're making. Well, I was motivated when I saw you guys out there <laughs> and the the uh, publicity that it was yeah. generated, the crowds that were generated. It the grabs the whole campus's yeah. attention, no yes. doubt. And secondly, as I was saying, more and more people are walking by where their ears are filled with their music okay. from their iPhones. Yep. And, and it just became a little bit more difficult to uh, get people's attention. And so we began to, uh, we created these, um, these banners back at about six years ago and began to put them up there to draw people's attention and to get the attention of those who will see us visually. But now, how many days are you on a campus? Usually? I'm usually on a campus three days. And you have three themes, right? So yeah. each day you have a different theme and the display reflects that theme, right? Correct. What are the themes? So day one is God exists. God is real. And we, we address some of the philosophical questions of, related to that. The second day, the Bible's true. Mm -hmm. And and again, answer those questions. A lot of what we do now is apologetics. Yep. And the third day is Jesus is the way back to God. There wasn't, you know, I a lot of what I do is Q&A. And yep. that's what, because I, I preach on campus five hours a day. I'm, I go out and I, I don't just give a 20 minute preaching and sit down. I start and we go for like five hours a day. Man. But once we get started, it's all Q and A throughout the rest of the day, and 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 I found that I would begin to preach just gospel stuff, gospel verses, gospel message, and people would begin to ask questions. Well, when I accepted those questions and welcomed those questions, I discovered a lot of people have those, and whether they're willing to admit it or not, they've got the same questions, mm -hmm. and they want to stop by and say, well, "I want to see how this guy answers that one." So. Well, let me ask you this, too, because uh, it, unfortunately, uh, there's a stereotype. It used to be. I don't know if it's that case today yeah. as to the campus preacher. Yeah. You know, and, and unfortunately, I, you know, in my college years, I ran across a few that I walked by and go, well, you know, I don't know if, that, if that's totally uh, winsome there to be saying what yeah. you're saying. One thing I like about you, and I, first of all, is the stereotype true, really, or is that just a caricature that the, you know, the God haters, the atheists kind of create about the campus preacher? And maybe that's a bad question. I know that I know that you're not. Uh, you, your approach is very civil, winsome, conversational, although I have no problem with people preaching the word of God. Yeah. Right. Standing on the soapbox, I'm for it. <laughs> the revivals have, have been brought in, you know, because of that kind of thing. I am totally with it. But a lot of people have this kind of thought in their mind, but that I don't know about that. So how, is that something I, I, even worth talking about? Or? Well, I've got to say <laughs> I am in a particular profession that has a lot of strange people. So am I, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've kind of noticed over the years. And, and uh, some, of them, some are very, very zealous. Yeah. Some of them are um, fairly independent. Right. And, and uh, some of them are going to do things their way. That's true. And that's, that's true. how they're going to do it. <laughs> and and uh, so, yes. Well, you know, I always ask, what's, where's the fruit? Yeah. And where's the fruit? If there's fruit, then I, I who am I to judge? Yeah. And I, I know there's fruit. I think one thing with me is, you know, I was really raised up in a Christian church where I was discipled and I was trained. And I had to learn how to receive instruction, receive correction, mm -hmm. be winsome, communicate well. Right. And my fruit got tested. And I couldn't just say, well, I proclaim the word of God and it never returns void. I had to actually, before I was, my leaders released me, they had to see effectiveness in, in what I church. did. Yes. Yeah. And that's a good thing too, because I, I know even in the pro-life movement, a lot of leaders don't even attend church. Yeah. They don't. They can't, they say, oh, I can't find a church. Oh, well, that's a problem. But uh, first of all, you need to be under somebody's authority. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible's very clear about it. You can't have authority unless you're under authority mm -hmm. and whether you're under authority of your board of directors, which we are, or your pastor or both, you can't just say, I'm not going to go to church. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole nother topic. We won't go there. Let, let's, let's, let's bring somebody in to, you know, you're on campus, you walk on the campus. How do you start the conversation? What are the things you, you ask to get it going? Well, and give us some stories after. Well, that. I, you know, I, um, I, I lift up my voice and I've got a loud voice. You do. You have a good one. Yeah. You have a good preacher's voice. I do. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm grateful to God for that. Yep. And I um, I just began to, it, it, it's very clear why I'm there. I'm there. I'm a Christian. I'm declaring God's word. 
Mm -hmm. I'll challenge people. I'll say, listen, I want, I want to be very clear where I'm here today. I want everybody within the sound of my voice to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, to believe in Jesus Christ, to become a genuine Christian. And if you won't, I'm going to challenge you to tell me a good reason why not. And that invites the interaction. Mm -hmm. Again, like I said, interaction is what's interesting. People, nobody wants to stop and hear another lecture. They're already lecturing. They don't right. even like their professors, <laughs> yeah, much right. less would they like me. Right. But they love to see a debate. They love to see interaction. They love to see some conflict. Yeah. And indeed, I challenge the beliefs on the campus. I challenge secular humanism. I challenge mm -hmm. atheism. Yeah. I challenge the LGBT. I challenge secularism. I do it graciously and I do it respectfully. But I, I say we have mm -hmm. the truth. We have a better way. Right. We have a superior way of life. And I challenge students to, to come to it. And and that and by throwing down the gauntlet, shall we say, mm -hmm. some people just can't walk by. They, they've so, got to respond. So tell us a story or two. I'm sure you've got lots of them. Uh, it may be hard to draw out just one, but yeah, where, where you, you know, it doesn't have to be one where you led somebody to Christ, but just a, a memorable moment. Uh, you know, you've got 40 years to draw on <laughs> for our listeners, for yeah. our viewers. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a fun one that that actually I told my daily podcast uh, just earlier this week. So I was at Iowa State University and I'd been preaching and it was a long, hot day. And I I was staying at, at a home and it was after midnight. I was still awake and I was tired and I was hot. I walked down to the quick trip to um, uh, to um, the corner store, to yeah, get the corner to drink, store to get something yeah. to drink. Yeah. And there were these two international students from the from the Middle East came in and they saw me there and they said, hey, you're that guy we were here listening on campus today. I said, yeah. And, that, and we got talking. One of them was quite interested. It's clear. And I shared the gospel with him and asked if he'd like to receive Christ about 1230 in the morning. And, there, and he said, well, um, I, maybe tomorrow, but tonight I've got a sin. I've got a sin I got to do. And he was not going to be wow. persuaded out of it. He was not going to be talked out of it. So we agreed to meet the next day at 11 o'clock before I started preaching. He showed wow. up. The sin was someone had insulted him and he wanted to insult them back. So it wasn't what I was thinking, yeah, but that's was, what it was. Yeah, I would have thought something else probably. When, yeah. When we, when, when we got together, I shared the gospel. And he was listening, but then he became, he just would not commit. And I asked him, I said, uh, Nahas was his name. I said, are you, I've never asked someone this before. But I said, are you like hearing voices or something telling you not to do this? He said, how did you know? Wow. And I said, well, I didn't know, but I just asked. <laughs> and, he, and evidently, he was. Voices screaming that if he did this, if he came to Christ, he would go to hell. Mm. And he told me of how when he was a child, he had been dedicated to a voodoo pagan god when he'd been sick. And, he, and this uh, witch doctor had healed him of a sickness. Wow, oh, man. And, and, and he'd been tormented by that ever since. Mm. And well, we prayed for him and you know what? Sure enough, the voices went away, but they didn't get him saved yet. He still needed Christ. And so that was, that was one story. And he did come to Christ. That guy went on staff with the Christian ministry and has had a very fruitful international exactly. ministry. And one then. thing you do, you, you return to campuses. Too. I do. You make, you make, you know, visits like at least once a year, right? Yes. Yeah. You don't just go randomly to a campus and never return. You try to return because, you know, students, you get them, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. I mean, yeah. it's kind of the same thing with us. We go to the same campuses, generally speaking. Correct. Uh, and there's a reason for that. And so often I have people say, you, you know, if I lead a person to Christ, I almost always find someone else had been doing some plowing and sowing before I got to read. Mm -hmm. Likewise, there's been so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have time for another quick story, this is Michigan right. State University. It's okay. We got this, time for one more. <laughs> okay. This this uh, this guy, uh, um, you know, I had a crowd and I was preaching. This guy says to me, "Do you think this works?" Nobody listens. To you do you think this works? I love that. And some guy stepped forward and he said, "Well, it worked for me." <laughs> and he said, "What do you mean?" And and he stood before the crowd and he said, "When Tom was here last year." I listened to him, and to be honest, I argued with him a little bit. But afterwards, I but I did listen. Afterwards, he said a prayer for me, mm -hmm. and I don't know, but I just started having interest. A couple weeks later, I found this Christian Bible study. About a month or two later, I became a Christian, and I I credited back to for the first time I got thinking about it when I heard Tom. So sometimes I get to reap where others have sown, and sometimes I sow where others. We'll reap. We'll reap. Yeah. And it's a team effort to win people to Christ. Yeah, of course yeah. it is. Yeah. So, folks, I want you to take action. You can go to TomThePreacher.com, TomThePreacher.com, 
and you can pick up this book. And, and what's the title of the other one, Tom? I have another one called Five Questions, which is a, this is a, an apologetic gospel presentation. It answers five questions. It tells how we know there's a God, why the Bible's trustworthy, why we need Christ, how Christ is the answer, mm -hmm. and then how really living for Christ is where life is to be found. And this one here, taking it to their turf, which is what we do here at Created Equal as well. This is a collection of stories of Tom on campus. If you like what you're hearing today, there's more of them in this yeah, book. Yeah. Right? I think it'll inspire you. And each story has a lesson to it as well. I tell a story, but there's always a lesson related to how to be involved in reaching people for Christ. And I also want you to check out Tom's social media. Uh, every morning, he has a daily prayer with uh, it's at 8.30 on, Eastern time, every morning, Monday through Friday, right? On well, well, YouTube. Seven days a week. Seven days a all week. All seven on YouTube. Search for Tom the Preacher, and you can find me. Okay. And like I say, my wife is well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. every morning. Good. And when I'm home, I try to do as well. But often I miss it because I'm already gone. But uh, folks, so I have Tom uh, Tom Short with me today. We're talking about taking it to the enemy's turf and evangelism generally. We got about three minutes left, Tom. Um, how are, you know, we've seen a lot of change in the last five years ever since Obergefell, the, the, yeah. the homosexual decision, a homosexual marriage. Uh, we are witnessing a moral revolution happening right before our eyes. Yeah. Like nothing America's ever experienced. Uh, I, I know this is a big question, but where do you see this going? I mean, we're, you know, we're praying for revival. We're working for revival. You're out preaching. You know, we need revival. I mean, yeah. There's nothing else is going to solve our problems. Right. But this is coming at us at light speed. Uh, it's dizzying almost to yeah. deal with what's happening. How do you as a preacher of the gospel deal with that? And where do you think we're headed? Well, I wish I had better news. I feel I feel our country's head. I, I feel our country is under judgment, mm -hmm. and is headed for worse. Yeah. Now I I encourage myself in no. So was Nineveh when Jonah went there, and God said, you know, so you got forty days and it's over. But they did repent, and God granted that repentance, and He saved the city. Mm -hmm. And and right. so I believe we're in tough times. I believe. You know, we have we have made decisions that God is and God is judging our country. The rise of the LGBT movement will not bring the judgment of God. It is the judgment of God. The that. decline of the church. You see the rise of the LGBT, the decline of the church and our influence. This is God's judgment. Um, can there be a, a, a revival? Yes. But things have got to turn. The tide's got to turn because it's heading the wrong way. Yeah. I sometimes think we are in a tsunami. I mm -hmm. picture a tsunami sweeping mm -hmm. across our country. Yeah. It's like. Who can we save? What what can we save? We right. have the better message. They have the better delivery system right now, unfortunately. They do. And now with cancel culture, you know, we, we're on social media. We're on YouTube and all that. Uh, we've relied, I think, too much on it, frankly. I mean, we need to be out on the streets yeah. more than ever before. And we're just waiting for the day that we're all going to be shut down. Yeah. I mean, do you think that'll ever come to a college campus? I mean, I know the First Amendment. We still have protections there. We haven't seen any pushback, any more pushback than what we're used to. But we're looking forward to things opening up again and getting back out there because the college campuses have been like ghost towns recently. And yeah. I'm hoping this fall that's going to change. Uh, do you expect us to always have that as a venue? I, I wonder with all that's going on, um, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a concern. They're certainly working against it. They, you know, there there have been petitions for to get me off campus. I'm sure the same with you. Yeah. There have been people saying that what we say is hate speech, That's right. and that we should be shut down, and 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 students' feelings should be protected. Right. And, trigger uh, warnings uh, yeah, around you. Uh, trigger warnings, <laughs> and so uh, that's certainly the fear. Right now, we still do have the courts. That's the one place we where we still have in our culture some hope some hope uh, and the first amendment is still a, a kind of universally agreed upon uh you know institution or belief that we have in america yes even if you don't agree with someone's message you still think generally speaking they should yes. have the right to to make it uh i don't know how long that'll last frankly i, I, I mean don't. as we see things erode over time but folks listen i want you to go to tomthepreacher.com you can pick up his two books five questions and taking it to their turf. I exhort you very uh, very much to go do that and to, to check out his social media. Uh, you also have a podcast, right? Correct. You have the daily prayer. 
And the podcast is basically the daily prayer. If you want to listen on that and you search for the Tom short show. Of okay. The Tom, And on, that's different than the daily prayer. No, no, that is. It's, it's we the same upload thing. It each day. You also have a blog. Right? Did you yes, send out yes, by email? Yes. So that's just a thought that you might have that you put on paper, or is that correct? And that can be you can get that at uh, tomthepreacher.com. Okay. You can tomthepreacher.com. Yes. Yeah. All right, folks. So tomthepreacher.com, pick up the books. And folks, if you want to donate to Created Equal, go to createdequal.org slash donate. If you like what you're hearing, you want to see more of this kind of thing on social media and listen online. You can also pick up our podcast on all the popular podcasting platforms, as well as American Family Radio. We're on 180 stations on American Family Radio. Tom, thanks for being on the program. My pleasure. And thank you for the good work you guys do. God well, bless we you. We love what you're doing, too. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember, America, to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to make a difference for the cause of life, liberty, and justice, go to createdequal.org. To follow Mark, go to markharringtonshow.com. Be sure to tune in next time for your marching orders in the culture war.